For the last time I made a box out of epoxy and wood, you guys had some great input on improvements for the future. Most of those being that I should try cutting the pins and dovetails out of actual epoxy instead of pouring it. So we're gonna give that a shot in this video. So around here, we don't like to just build random things that have no purpose. Huh? And one thing that we like to do is keep snacks on hand, most of that being bacon. Bacon snacks. So for this build, I'm gonna make a bacon serving tray that looks like bacon with epoxy, because why the hell not? So to make the tray look like bacon, we're gonna do a bent lamination using cherry and maple, which means we're gonna need to cut up some wood. Let's get to it. All right, so now that we have all of our chunks of chunk, chunk of chunk, we're going to make our calls, which will be how we get the curves into all those strips. So I'm gonna just laminate two pieces of MDF together, rip them on, cut them on the bandsaw, and we should be able to get this in both these sides and glue up here shortly. All right, so I got a little grid pattern laid out. We're gonna put some nails where we think we can get our piece to bend. So hopefully I can trace it. Now the problem might become that we're still, might be too much of a curve for wood that's not steamed. Put your weight on it. All right, so now that this mold's kind of made, let's see if this thing can actually work. What's the worst that can happen? Just break all of the two and a half hours of work I just put in? It's clamping pretty decent. Now on to the most important part of not only making a bacon serving tray, but in life. It is the fat to meat ratios. Sam cut these in half to make them easier to cook for himself. But if we look here, you can see we've got some beautiful marbling and the fat's kind of nice and thick. It pretty much looks as damn close to the sapwood as you can get. I thought I was gonna have to run some maple through it. Where the fuck is the bacon? Sam, where the fuck did the bacon go? Oh. What? I was hungry. Mmm. Mmm. If you guys can't tell that we love having a grill at the shop, then you're probably blind. But big thanks goes out to Pit Boss for sponsoring this build. We love it. Bacon makes everything better. We gotta get back to this ridiculous glue up. Get you some. Now for the tricky part taking my, my bacon-esque looking board and gluing it up. So now the bacon tray is dry. You could tell, I already took this one out. Looking very bacony. We've got to flatten these things because they did twist and bow a little bit, which was expected, but they're looking pretty damn cool. Pretty darn cool. Let go! It's like maple bacon. Doesn't taste like maple. Ooh, shit! That's gonna be sweet. That is very bacony. So now we've got the bacon relatively flat. In order to make these the same size, we're gonna do a little cleanup, and then we're gonna cut all of our joints and do everything together, so that way it's kind of the same, because can't figure out how the hell I would do it anyway.
All right, so these are all nice and smooth, pretty close. Now I need to create a way of referencing something square in order to cut this thing. So I'm just gonna use the template I used for glue up. So I'm basically just gonna line this up with center on my board here. I've got all these reference marks, kind of like gives me the points that I want already. I don't even like need to measure, I just need to reference it. I should be able to get it close to a square more uniform than square is what I'm looking for. I'm pleasantly surprised. <laughs> 24 and a 16th and 24 and a 16th, they're parallel. Which is good because it's not sitting on the center here, it's sitting on these outsides. Now I just gotta figure out how the fuck I can cut dovetails into this. So it's time to go up a form. Now I did the math for uh, the mold and our next mold for our next project. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and then hit that bell. No yeah, hit that little ding-a-ling-a-ling -ling bell icon so your notification goes off so you can see my next resin project as well because they're getting poured simultaneously. <laughs> We're attempting flow cast again for this pour. Same stuff we used on the dovetails that float. That time we only poured it to be three quarters of an inch. This time we're gonna pour an inch and a half. So we need five and a half liters of resin. That's the noise it makes when it comes out. You would know if you tried this. Before I cut it, I think I wanna take these, these nubbles off. All right, now that these are flat and square, I can take a marking gauge, get my thickness. Ready. Now onto the weirdness. I gotta figure out how the hell I'm gonna cut pins in resin. Cause I'll be blatantly honest. Don't cut easy. But in the words of Ronnie Dunn. I believe. I should probably never do that again. My concern is that I'm gonna get out of square because I can't mark a reference shoulder. So when you when you line two things up, you typically line up off of a reference shoulder. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna do that yet, but figuring out when I get there. Oh, it's so weird. The crucial part I'm, that's gonna happen with these is that if this isn't perfectly straight, that cut, I like can't pair it back with a chisel. I know I can't use a chisel, but that's okay. 
Well, so I got the first one cut and seated. If you see here, come around for the seating. I'm gonna be blatantly honest, I am extremely surprised on how well that went. Those are pretty tight. This one's a little loose butthole, but nothing that, uh, it's a little bit room for, because we're gonna use resin to fill them. And I might even leave these proud so people don't think I poured them. We'll find out. This weirdness is kind of working. So I'm gonna match this, this radius here. I think we need to put handles on this bacon tray. I mean, it's a, it's a bottom. It works. It would hold bacon. Bacon, anyone? Would you like some bacon? Would you like some bacon? Great. Mm -hmm. Due to unfortunate circumstances, I had to re-epoxy a, a few pieces back onto our parts and let it sit overnight. Uh, we should have finished this yesterday. So now I have to re-sand it. Yay. Let us spread. This thing was crazy weird, but a ton of fun. If you want to see me build something else that's super weird, I'll see you on this video right here. Go. Click it.